A French-Iranian journalist named Fridunne Sahibyam was traveling through Iran when his car suddenly broke down. Stranded by the side of the road for a couple of hours, he waited anxiously for help to arrive. Eventually, a small bus appeared, and the driver agreed to tow his car to the nearest village, Kupaya. Meanwhile, Zara had gone to the river to bury some bones and clothing shreds that she had found. As she was digging, she heard the sound of approaching vehicles and saw Freydun's car being towed by the bus. She quickly finished burying the items and rushed back to Kupaye to see what was happening. When she arrived, she saw Freydun leaving his car with the local mechanic, Hashem. Initially, Hashem refused to take the job, but Freydun offered him some extra dollars and he eventually agreed to fix the car. Zara noticed that Freydun was carrying a tape recorder in his bag and became curious about him. She tried to approach him to warn him about the dark secrets hidden by the village, but she was interrupted by the town's mullah, Sheikh Hassan, and the mayor, Ebrahim. They accused her of being crazy and sent her away. Zara knew that something was not right in Kuhpaya, and she felt that Freydun's presence in the village could put him in danger. She decided to keep a close eye on him and see if she could find a way to alert him about the lurking dangers. Zahra tells him that her niece, Saraya Manucheri, was married to an abusive man named Ali. They have four children together, but their relationship is non-existent. Ali wants to divorce Saraya so he can marry a 14-year-old girl named Mary. However, Soraya refuses to give him the divorce as she cannot maintain the family by herself. Soraya fears that the divorce will bring her disgrace and poverty. This situation has been ongoing for a few weeks. Ali, who is determined to make Sheikh talk to her, resorts to threatening him with revealing his past as a convict to the village if he does not comply. Sheikh, who is left with no other option, reluctantly agrees to visit Soraya at her home. Unbeknownst to Sheikh, Zara, Soraya's aunt, is within earshot listening in on their conversation. During their conversation, Sheikh tries to remind Soraya of her duties as a wife, urging her to fulfill them. However, Soraya is unable to do so, and Sheikh suggests that accepting a divorce would be the best solution. Ali, Soraya's husband, agrees to let her keep their daughters while he takes their sons, and Zara can keep the house. Unfortunately, this is not enough for them to survive. In a bid to sweeten the deal, Sheikh offers to provide for Soraya and her daughters. In exchange, Soraya would become his temporary wife, allowing him to visit her. Zahra, who is outraged by Sheikh's proposition, interrupts their conversation and kicks him out of the house. She accuses him of treating Soraya like a harlot and warns him not to come back. Once he is gone, Zahra asks Soraya about her relationship with Ali, and her answer is to show her the bruises he leaves on her body whenever he takes what he wants. Some hours later, while Soraya and her kids are sharing a meal, Ali returns home and yells at her, saying she has shamed him and made him the town's laughingstock for not accepting the divorce. He starts talking to his two boys about all they could do if they were able to leave, turning them against her for not wanting the divorce and not having an ounce of shame when mentioning Mary in front of his children. Soraya and Ali's heated argument reaches a boiling point when Soraya accuses Ali of being a bad husband who is planning to abandon her and their daughters without providing for them. However, before she can finish her accusation, their oldest son intervenes and yells at Soraya, defending his father. Ali, taking advantage of the situation, orders Soraya to clean the table. This only serves to infuriate Soraya further, and in a fit of rage, she throws a plate on the floor, shattering it into countless pieces. Ali, feeling disrespected, demands payment for the broken plate. Soraya, who has already reached her limit, decides to leave the house with her daughters. However, Ali is not prepared to let her go and hits her twice to scare her into staying. Despite the physical assault and abuse, Soraya remains brave and determined to leave. She takes her daughters to stay with Zara, who promises to help her and speaks to the mayor on her behalf. Zara is confident that the mayor may be able to help them since he had once expressed interest in her and even proposed to her. Their talk is suddenly interrupted by Hashem, who comes asking for Zara's help with his terribly sick wife since the doctor is out of town. On the way to his house, Zara sees Ali in his car with another woman, but for now, she must concentrate on Hashem's wife. Sadly, there is nothing Zara can do as the wife is already dead by the time they get there. Zara spends the night getting her ready for burial, as tradition demands, and in the morning, Soraya comes to help, kicking out all the women that were already trying to take the wife's belongings without respecting her death, claiming Hashem won't need them. Once she's done with the body, Zara is called over by Sheikh, who tells her Hashem can't take care of his house and his son alone, so it would be a good idea for Soraya to help him. Zara agrees to talk to her only if her niece will get a wage for this work, and that the money will only be hers, and Ali can't touch. Sheikh accepts the deal. As Zara leaves the building, she's stopped by Ibrahim, who warns her to watch her mouth 
or she will get in trouble. Saraya starts her work with Hashem. She quickly gets the appreciation of both Hashem and his son, unaware that Ali is always watching them interact from a distance. Hashem's treatment of Saraya is good, and this puts her in a better mood. She starts stitching her own clothes and gives some of her money to Zahra, who hides it and saves it so that in the future, she can finally have enough to divorce Ali and still support her daughters. One night Ali talks to Sheikh and tells him he thinks Saraya is cheating on him with Hashem. The punishment for infidelity is stoning. Therefore, Sheikh thinks Ali is going too far with these accusations. Knowing Saraya isn't the type to do this kind of thing. Ali says he is unwilling to pay for her alimony and assures that he'll find a witness so they can take this to trial. But first, he is going to start rumors about Saraya in their tiny village. The following day, while helping at the bakery, Zara already hears those rumors coming from the other women's mouths. Soraya has a day off, so she goes on a picnic with her daughters and picks up some flowers that she later takes to Hashem's house as decoration. When he returns home earlier than she expected, he invites her to stay over for dinner, but she turns him down even after hearing he hates to eat alone. The next day, Zara sees Ali and Sheikh meet with Ibrahim, who will only agree to try Soraya if he receives corroborating evidence or witnesses. Later, Zara also tries to talk to him, accusing him of conspiring with Ali and slapping him when he implies that Saraya might sleep with Hashem. After calling him Ali's slave, Zara goes to Saraya and tries to warn her about what is happening, but Saraya thinks her aunt is just being paranoid. Meanwhile, Hashem is called to Ali and the Sheikh so they can interrogate him about Saraya's behavior towards him. These questions upset him, and the fact that he was offered a contract he couldn't read didn't help, so he decided to leave. However, Ali and Sheikh followed him home and threatened to send his child to a mental hospital or prison if he did not agree to be a witness at Saraya's trial. Not wanting his son to suffer, Hashem gave up and agreed to lie to them, claiming that Saraya slept in his bed and talked to him as if he were her husband. Moments later, Ali shows up at Saraya's house and drags her onto the street, beating her in front of a crowd while accusing her of cheating on him. Zara jumps in and gets between her and Ali, calling him out for making such a public show out of a private matter. After asking one of her neighbors to get the mayor, Zara takes Soraya to hide her in her house, and Ali follows them there. Ibrahim arrives soon afterwards, and hears Ali present the proof of Soraya's infidelity. He sees them touching hands and whispering to each other like a couple, while smiling. Soraya swears she never cheated. Zara points out it isn't a crime to be nice to people, but Hashem arrives and tells the lies Ali had exploited him into saying. This was enough for Ibrahim to proceed with the trial. Ali, his friends and sons, the Sheikh, and even Soraya's father, Morteza Ramazani, was allowed to help her, but Soraya herself had to wait at home. A few hours later, the verdict was announced by her father. Soraya had been found guilty, and she would be stoned in an hour. When news reaches Zara's house, she tries to help Soraya escape, but the men outside push them back into the house. Accepting her fate, Soraya said goodbye to her daughters by giving them her old family jewels, and Zara agreed to take care of them after she left, and one day, tell them the truth about what happened to their mother. In the meantime, the village men get ready for the stoning by picking up rocks and digging a hole. Even the kids are helping, while Sheikh gets his beard trimmed and Ibrahim prays to his god, asking for a sign that he is doing the right thing. Soraya's youngest son also came to say goodbye, but the older one still hated her and took his brother away. When Soraya finally breaks down and begins to cry, Zara tries to give her a final moment of comfort by brushing her hair and singing her a song. When the time came, the two walked while trying their best to avoid the angry crowd that wanted to insult and beat Soraya. Upon arriving at the place where the stoning will take place, Sheikh and Abraham once again announce the verdict and method of punishment, causing the crowd to applaud. They are suddenly interrupted by a group of traveling artists who want to perform at the market, but they are kicked out before they can do anything. After removing her chador and revealing her white dress, Soraya was tied up and lowered into a hole in the ground, then filled in until only her upper body was sticking out and she had no possible chance to escape. Zara tried to get between her and the crowd, asking them to let her take Soraya's place, but she was dragged away so the stoning could begin. The first two stones were thrown by Morteza, who no longer considered Soraya his daughter, but he failed each time. One of the women in the crowd suggested this could be a sign of her innocence but she was ignored. Ali goes next and his stones do hit her, causing Soraya to cry and bleed. The Sheikh had the next turn, and following him, Soraya's two sons also threw stones at their mother. Hashem also has a chance to throw stones at her, but he couldn't do it himself, so he left the area with his son before the whole crowd joined in, 
and threw stones at her until she was no longer breathing. When everyone had left, the traveling artists covered her with a blanket. Later that evening, Zara and her friends carried the body near the river while the town held a celebration. Back in the present, Freydun finishes recording Zara's story and takes the tape off the tape recorder, leaving it on the table right before Hashem comes to tell him that his car is ready. When they returned to the repair shop, they saw Ali walking by and heard him tell the sheikh that his marriage to Mary was annulled because he could not help her father, which was part of the agreement to take her hand. Hearing this, Hashem gets upset and commented that there was no point in him lying and causing Sariah's death. This attracts Ebrahim's attention. Hashem confesses that he lied and was threatened by Ali and Sheikh to do so. His confession angers Ebrahim, and he wants to call out Sheikh for this. Deciding to deal with this matter later, they have to currently stop Freydun from leaving. The journalist ignores them and gets in the car, but Sheikh has the revolutionary guards under his command. The guards threaten Freydun with their weapons, so he gives them his bag. He is permitted to leave only after destroying all of the tapes. However, on his way out of town, Zahra gives him the tape he left at her house. The car started having trouble again, so she stepped between him and the crowd to give him time to take off. Freydun escaped despite the stones thrown at him, and Zahra triumphed that the story would reach the world. Later, Freydun published the story of Saraya in the form of a book. The book became an international bestseller, and Zahra's attempts to tell the world about the injustice her poor niece received succeeded. 